and west, and that would be across central Craig County. Venita seeing some heavy downpours back towards Chelsea. We also have that thunderstorm there moving out of your vicinity. Tulsa area, we are in the clear. Does not appear the storm threat will be with us much longer. I do want to show you the risk of severe weather going forward this afternoon. We don't officially have a watch box in effect, but this is our risk zone for the rest of our evening. Uh, this will be in areas to the east of Tulsa, along and east of Highway 69, the Grove area, the Tahlequah area, Adair up towards Miami and Venita. You still lie in a zone where storms capable of brief tornadoes or high winds are possible in addition to a flooding threat. Back to right at radar we go back to our severe thunderstorm warning. If you're just joining me, it's actually a tornado warning we're concerned about. That is why we're doing wall to wall coverage at this time so we can keep the folks aware of this in Mays County. It's mainly south of Pryor where you're going to find some of the issues uh, and also uh, near Shoto. I want to go back to the latest scan on the radar and what we do notice here is that we still have that minimal rotation going on north of Mazy uh, and located along Highway 69 heading in on Paradise View. I'm going to do another storm track on this particular cell as it moves eastward. Uh, that cell still is in an environment that could strengthen and stability is growing this afternoon and this will once again take it to the north and east. Locust Grove, you're just at the edge of the warning but be prepared to take your yourself your go to your safe spot by 430 that cell is moving over you the rain will begin before uh, 430 but the actual arrival of any potential rotation will be there as well you can see von caster he's on the screen he's watching the leading edge of these storms north of this particular tornado warned storm but those cells to the north as well similar environment if they get better organized they could also start to spin a little bit further and produce this same kind of threat uh, the other storm within that warning uh, that we're watching closely is located south of Pryor. If you're in Pryor, you are officially just barely in the warning. The south side of town is in that warning, uh, but that threat is primarily going to stay along State Highway 69A and continue its way eastward towards Salina. There's the latest update on radar. I'm going to put on the uh, rotation again, a little bit more of a defined uh, rotation at this point. Um, so we are noticing uh, the outbound here, the inbound here. So we have that rotation there over State Highway 69 to the east of uh, Highway 69 proper, running from Choteau to Pryor. Uh, and that zone will continue to take it to the east-northeast, right over Lake Hudson, Salina. I would just be ready to head on to your safe spot pretty soon as this cell approaches your vicinity. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the east. It's moving at about uh, 25 miles per hour. Uh, so that would put it in Salina now at 422. That time's adjusted by just a few moments, but we've noticed a bit of an uptick in that speed there. Uh, we continue to watch this pretty closely as it moves eastward. Okay, we have another tornado warning now, folks. Uh, this new tornado warning is for areas to the south and east of uh, Tahlequah. All right, so that particular cell, there is another sign of rotation. This warning is going to go until... 445. It's moving to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. That does include Stillwell and also up towards uh, the Westville area. Those are some of the larger communities involved with this warning. All right, so as we look on reflectivity, there's our cell. The point of interest is going to be over an area just north of Lake Tenkiller, moving in on Rocky Mountain. Okay, so we've got a rotation right here. It's at the extreme eastern end of Cherokee County. If you're in Tahlequah, this is not for you. But there it is, a more defined hook taking uh, shape here on radar, and that will be taking it towards Stillwell. So once again, these storms are taking a characteristic of a supercell thunderstorm, and uh, this will continue its way eastward towards Stillwell. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put on the storm track here for folks that are in the path of this one. This is going to be heading to the east-northeast at about 30 miles per hour or so. Stillwell, that puts you in the risk zone at 427. That's when the rotation will be approaching Fairfield. But if you live in Rocky Mountain, up towards England, Fairfield and Salem, you're in the zone, you're in this fan where we could end up with that rotation passing on and over. This means a possible tornado, a radar indicated tornado at this time. Um, it is moving to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. Uh, we do also, there he is, a tornado watch has just been issued that warrant that watch goes until 9 o'clock this evening. Now, uh, I'm going to zoom out so you can see where that watch uh, include what it includes. It's just for the northeastern corner of Oklahoma. If you're in Sequoia County, Cherokee County, Adair County, Delaware, Mays, Craig, and Ottawa County, your watch is in effect till 9 p.m., though the risk pretty much going between now and about 5 o'clock. 
that's the window of time we could end up with that risk. But we are seeing these cells spinning enough of an environment of rotation and in some of these storms we have more of them. We're watching the one down by Salisaw. That one itself is gaining in strength along with the one south of Stillwell. So we might end up with more tornado warnings going here through the afternoon. The cells to the north are not spinning to a point where there is a potential tornado, but we're watching that threat closely. I'm going to go back to our first tornado warn cell. Check in on the rotation here. Uh, the storm to the north near Sportsman Acres not nearly as organized as it was before. Uh, the rotation, it's uh, pretty minimal on that cell. Uh, also to the south, uh, the rotation is now pushing off to the east and northeast of Maisie. Maisie, it appears you're in the clear at this point. But if you live to the east of Maisie, up towards Locust Grove, we are watching out for this to be moving in your zone in the next 20 minutes or so. Uh, looking on radar right now, if you're in Paradise View, that's kind of where we're watching out for that potential cell. This will be continuing its way eastward with time, uh, heading towards Murphy and Locust Grove. Let me put the new storm track on here as we track this eastward. Uh, this general zone uh, still in the mix for a potential tornado. Locust Grove, you're in the mix by 427. If you're in Iron Post, it's about the same timing for you all the way out to Snake Creek uh, there shortly thereafter. I'm going to extend that warning, though, or that uh, fan uh, going until um, okay, uh, going until uh, the uh, for a full hour, so we can get a better vantage point of where this is heading. Uh, okay, there you go. Rose 4:44, Leech probably about 4:55 is when that would be heading your way. Okay, so once again, we are watching these cells closely. Brandon Wells, uh, he's closing in on those cells. Um, Brandon, if you're with me right now, do you have an update? It looks like you have a visual of a rain-free base in front of you. Yeah, Mike, uh, I just want to make a note real quick that uh, the sheriff, uh, I know the sheriff has 412 uh, shut down for the possibility of uh, this area crossing 412. Uh, from my vantage point, Mike, um, I'm not seeing anything well defined uh, at this time, but about five to 10 minutes was uh, a slight lowering just to my west, uh, just to my east. Uh, but that has been dissipated. Uh, but it does look like it's going through an organization phase, Mike. So we're going to keep east with this, and uh, we'll let you know if anything changes. All right, thank you, Brandon. Once again, this cell is moving into a favorable environment for further intensification. So the area of concern is located a couple miles south of Highway 412 there, moving to the east-northeast at about 25 miles per hour. Locust Grove, this is the time to go ahead and take cover. Perhaps you have the sirens going off in your vicinity. The other warning, though, located across extreme eastern Cherokee County, but really most concerned about Adair County at this point. Not Adair, the community, but Adair County, Stillwell and Westville in particular. That cell has increased in intensity rather quickly. Uh, I'm going to switch to, uh, okay, uh, there we go with another vantage point of some of that rotation. We have a pretty clear defined rotation here near Rocky Mountain, probably better than the storms located across uh, Shoto area and to the east. This particular cell moving to the east northeast, there is an in, definitely an uptick in lightning. That would indicate it is a stronger cell as well. As it moves to the east northeast, it will be passing over areas um, in central Adair County. That puts it around Stillwell at 424, the Peavine area. Uh, shortly thereafter and approaching the Oklahoma Arkansas line in about 30 minutes from now. That is a 30 minute uh, fan right there in terms of our storm track. And so that will continue to take it eastward with time. So once again, that warning goes until 445. The tornado watch until 9 p.m. for our easternmost counties. If you're watching from Tulsa, just a reminder, this particular um, these storms are to your east and not affecting the metro area, but still a risk to those communities uh, to the east. The cells right now across uh, portions of Mays County are not showing up to be nearly as intense. They're a bit disorganized. So I'm going to stick with the cell located near Stillwell. Um, that is located over an area that is south and east of Tahlequah. Tahlequah not in the mix for this, but still in a zone where we could end up with um, a brief spin up of a tornado. That would be near Rocky Mountain moving um, really closing in on Stillwell. I'd say Stillwell more than Westville at risk. This might be passing just a few miles to the north of Stillwell, but if you're in that community, go ahead and take your uh, shelter, uh, go ahead and shelter in place and take your tornado precautions. That cell continuing its way east, north, eastward as well. Um, Want to go ahead and draw on the, uh, the there is our latest um, on three. Okay, perfect. Um, 
Okay, well, once again, we're looking at our, our spin on radar here. Uh, that rotation indicated there, and there's the new update. It is still a fairly intense rotation. It's uh, fairly compact as well. That would indicate a healthier rotation. That would indicate that potential for a tornado increasing near Rocky Mountain, heading towards Stony Point and Fairfield. This is going to be along and north of Highway 100 and uh, on from there. Okay, we've got another update from Brandon Wells. He's watching the storms that are located back to the north and west across southern Mays County. Brandon, what's the latest? Yeah, Mike, here at four, uh, South 431 Road and 412, there is uh, a tremendous amount of insulation and leaves uh, falling out of the sky. Uh, looking back to the southeast, this is my southeast there, there does appear to be uh, a lowering uh, it's not a real big lowering, but it's there, and um, we're trying to get into better position to where we can intercept this. Mike, back to you. All right, thank you, Brandon. Once again, that would be an indication of at least high winds, but if there was a tornado, we would end up seeing something like insulation or leaves dropping out of the air. So that is a concern for the areas east of Tulsa for sure. Um, that would still be a storm formidable enough to produce a possible tornado. The warning still ongoing for the next 18 minutes. It is now to the southeast of Shoto, moving in towards Locust Grove. So if you're anywhere around Locust Grove, Take your tornado precautions. We've already noted there has been a funnel with this storm and a possible tornado moving to the northeast at about 25 miles per hour. Uh, this will continue its way on the way through southern half of Mays County. If you're watching from prior, this is not really a concern for you. The storms are passing to your east and to your southeast. Uh, once again, to the south and west, uh, south and east from there, we have a fairly defined supercell thunderstorm right near Rocky Mountain. That particular storm will continue its way eastward. There's the rotation located there where the green meets the red. That's an indication of rotation there, and this will be pushing its way towards Stillwell, Fairfield, and this will probably be approaching the Oklahoma Arkansas line in the next 30 minutes. So Adair County, central Adair County in particular, this is a risk for you. What you'll notice with these storms, though, aside from this one now picking up in lightning, there has not been a history of much lightning. Therefore, this could catch you off guard. A brief heavy downpour in this environment, though, with these cells could end up leading to a brief tornado. We also have a new severe thunderstorm warning now located across Sequoia County. This particular cell is where we have J.D. McManus. Uh, maybe we can get J.D. on the phone and talk with him in just a moment. This storm is pushing northeast of Salisaw. It is likely a risk for both hail and hail up to the size of quarters and winds gusting to 60 miles per hour, taking it over a mostly rural section of the county. But also notice there is a bit of a hook there. And if we put this uh, uh, looking at the storm relative velocities, not much an indication of rotation, but there is still a little bit of broad uh, what we notice a bit of a broad rotation with that. So if you're in northeastern Sequoia County, that down the hatches, this storm could at least produce 60 mile per hour winds. It could also produce um, hail to the size of quarters. Looking at our hail risk right now, I'm going to query this and show you that we have near Aikens the potential for one inch hail. That is the quarter size hail we are talking about. That risk will continue towards Belfonte, the short area, Copic Slab, and eventually over the border towards uh, natural dam to the north of Fort Smith. All right, let's put a track on this and we'll show you kind of where this is heading. Uh, this is going to be in a zone primarily to the north and east of Salisaw. The storm is just bypassing you now. Um, we do have J.D. McManus. He's joining us on the phone now watching this particular severe cell. J.D., have you noticed any lowerings with these cells or anything of note? Uh, yeah, I have, Mike. Uh, they've all had lowerings with them. They've all had wall clouds with them and broad rotation. Uh, this storm does not look as well organized as the one that passed north of Ian earlier, but this storm is very intense and severe, so we're gonna keep an eye on it, Mike. We'll send it back to you. Okay, thank you, J.D. Once again, that cell not tornado warned, but still has the potential for strong winds gusting up to 60 miles per hour and hail to the size of quarters. Further north, we have the storm located across central Adair County. This storm still has quite a well-defined hook on it, and I'm looking on the, uh, the velocities there, we still have that rotation showing up. So if you see the green meets the red, that is our rotation. It appears it's gonna take a track just to the north of Stillwell, but go ahead and take your safe spot or head to that safe spot in Stillwell. It's the zone where uh, within that, we could still see some change in its motion and that could take it into Stillwell itself. We also have our other storm teams out. They're watching the other storms ongoing across the area. Uh, the tornado warning, by the way, has been cut back to the south, um, basically not including Salina. That cell to the north is no longer a concern, uh, but the one near uh, and east of Shoto is certainly something that we're watching closely coming in on Locust Grove. Uh, we do have Vaughn Caster on the phone. He's watching the cells up near Big Cabin. Vaughn, what is the latest? 
Yeah, uh, this uh, storm that's just moved to the south of Big Cabin, uh, it's definitely got a pronounced lowering with it right now. Uh, all of these, I think, are going to have rotation with them. That's just being on the right one that uh, is going to be, you know, they could all go tornadic at any time. So that's why we're out here. But this is going to have a lot of rain with it. Have not seen any hail. But there's going to be definitely some scary-looking low-hanging clouds as it moves uh, to the northeast, Mike. Back to you. Thank you, Vaughn. You make a very good point. A lot of these cells have very low-hanging clouds. It's because the moisture-rich environment. But a moisture-rich environment in which one with that, that, that does have spin involved is one where we could see tornadoes forming. So that is our concern. But not all the lowering clouds that we see there, the scary-looking clouds, as we call them, are necessarily a sign of an imminent tornado. But that's why our storm trackers are out, because they can distinguish one from the other. Uh, so once again, we also have that cell coming in on Shoto. Brandon Wells is getting a little bit closer. It looks like you've uh, located uh, kind of that lowering base uh, there. Brandon, what is the latest on that particular storm? Yeah, Mike, right now, uh, the area of concern right there in the uh, shot, it's not it's not real organized. It's not real tight, but right there in the middle of your screen, I don't know if you can make that out or not, but right there, that's the area that we're concerned with. Uh, it's not real organized, and it's not real tight. But about five minutes ago, there was a lowering halfway to the ground, uh, but it has disorganized since then, Mike. We're going to stay with it. Brandon, you mentioned earlier that they were closing off Highway 412 to the east from Inola. Do you know if that's still the case? Uh, that was about 10 to 15 minutes ago. Uh, I don't know if they still have it shut down, but as I was coming through, uh, Mays uh, County Sheriff's Department had it had it shut down, Mike. Okay, good to know, Brandon. Uh, if you are heading east from Tulsa towards maybe Fayetteville or somewhere uh, in far eastern Oklahoma on 412, be aware these cells are traveling right along 412. The rotation just located uh, very close to... Uh, really where it breaks off into the Cherokee Turnpike, I believe there. Is that right, Brandon? Are we getting close to that junction? Yes, yes, that would be correct, Mike. That would be correct. Okay, and this would put it in Locust Grove at about 429. So we're about 10 minutes out from that particular rotation heading right towards uh, Locust Grove. And this angles right along the highway there. So Highway 412 uh, is a place where I'd be watching. There appears to be a bit of a tightening of that circulation, in fact. Uh, latest scan indicates a little bit higher velocities taking place there uh, to the north of Murphy coming in towards Locust Grove. So please be taking cover in those locations. I'm going to widen the view a little bit back to uh, the uh, reflectivity mode and uh, we do have a new tornado warning. That's for uh, portions of, I believe that's Washington County in Arkansas. That would be south and west of Fayetteville. So if you have friends or family in Fayetteville, be aware that this storm could be eventually heading toward the south side of there, but that is officially out of our viewing area. Okay, so we're watching a few other cells. Uh, we are watching the one in Adair County that is moving to the east-northeast. That would put it near Stony Point and north of Rocky Mountain. The latest velocities on this uh, show there's still quite a rotation with that. And as Vaughn mentioned earlier, these cells are an environment where any of them could start spinning so that is a concern as they move to the east northeast this is a situation where we could have a brief flare-up uh, Brandon uh, I want to go back to you right now it appears that you've got a quite a lowered uh, area in the clouds uh, what do you have right now yeah Mike uh, looking back to the east southeast uh, a very well defi uh, defined lowering uh, it does look uh, a lot more organized than uh, just momentarily it has wrapped up very very quickly um, it's still somewhat displaced from the ground. We're probably within, I would say, uh, maybe a quarter mile to a mile from the area of rotation, uh, but it's very ragged, but it is, uh, it's definitely trying to, trying to organize there, Mike. Perfect. Okay, Brandon, thank you so much. Yeah, that cloud is hanging low. It doesn't appear to be rotating all that rapidly. That is the good news, but there's still that indication of rotation on radar. And it's right now uh, just a few miles from Locust Grove. Here's our measurement tool. If you're in Locust Grove, this is located about four miles to your southwest. Uh, so that's going to put it in the town in just a few moments. So be aware, it's not a confirmed tornado. We don't see one right now, but it is wrapping up a little bit more. So please be taking cover if you're in Locust Grove. I'm going to take you over to Links 3 right now. We do have a track on the storm. Uh, Station 9 is here also helping to 
to monitor the situation. And he's, she's put on this track here, leading uh, this storm through Stillwell at 436. We're back on the cell now that is located in Adair County, moving towards Westville at 502 and Lincoln at 517. That's the zone where we could end up with a brief spin up. In addition to that, 60 mile per hour winds are a concern as these continue their way to the east northeast at about 30 miles per hour or so. Uh, we are watching other cells in the viewing area as well, some of which are located to the north of those tornado worn cells. No official warning, but we have our own Vaughn Caster and Darren Stevens watching those closely. Uh, Vaughn, if you're with me right now, do you have an update on the cell near Big Cabin? Uh, yes, Mike. Um, it looks like visually it's getting stronger. Uh, the back base is kind of filled in with rain here. It's probably going to uh, uh, develop a new updraft right on the south side of it. Um, but uh, it was pretty low to the ground uh, just a little bit earlier. And like I said, the rain is filled in. It's developing a new updraft, but it, it was getting a lot stronger. Um, but uh, we're going to watch it as well as the cell that is just southwest of Adair. That one uh, looks pretty interesting, on at least on radar, Mike, and I'll probably – be dropping south and have a look at that one. Back to you. Thank you, Vaughn. We're taking a look at that cell closely right now. It's located about five to six miles to the south and west of Adair. Uh, there is a little bit of lightning activity with this as we look at the barren button, perhaps some very small hail associated with it as well. And yes, once again, a little bit of a signature of just a little rotation there. Um, just, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not super well organized, but there is the potential for that as this continues its way east northeastward. So be aware of that Adair. No tornado warning, no severe thunderstorm warning, but still a risk for a few storms that could be intensifying with time. Okay, just want to give you a quick overview of what's going on. Tornado watch until 9 o'clock. A small tornado warning for the area still near Locust Grove. If you're in Locust Grove, please be taking cover. And finally, the tornado warning across central portions of Adair County. The main area basically to the north and west of Stillwell by just a few miles. And one more severe thunderstorm located north of Muldrow and kind of the hillier section of Sequoia County there to the north of uh, that town. And that will continue its way towards the Arkansas border. The Tulsa area not in the mix, but we're watching this very closely. Okay, I want to take you to another storm track. Um, this is the storm that has uh, produced at least a funnel cloud that we know of. It's the storm that Brandon Wells is on and located near uh, Locust Grove. You'll find it moving in within the next seven minutes. So the rotation there about three miles south and west of town. This is right on 412. The Cherokee Turnpike located here. Here's the alternate route just to the north. Either location, either route still right near that potential rotation. Brandon Wells has been keeping a close eye on it. Your shot looks rather impressive there, Brandon. What's the latest on the storm visually? Yeah, Mike, visually, the area north, there are two areas of rotation. It looks like the area north of actually going over 412 right now, just north of 412, is occluding while there's an area to the south that is reorganizing. So we're watching two areas here. Uh, the area to the north looks like it's occluding. Uh, it's kind of dissipating, but the area back to the south looks like it's taking more on. I haven't seen any real well find uh, rotation, but it's definitely uh, got some motion to it, but it's not real organized, Mike. Yep, thank you, Brandon, and you're exactly right. As we look back on the ref uh, on the uh, velocity mode, these are very transient, uh, very kind of in and out kind of um, rotation spots that we notice on radar. Uh, still near Locust Grove, a bit of rotation, but it's a little more disorganized at this point. That is great news as it comes in on a more populated area, but still being right along the highway, we urge folks to uh, uh, perhaps um, just find a safe spot to pull over or uh, end up um, once again uh, just finding some place that will be uh, a, a, an exit point where you can get off and uh, and be in a safe spot outside of your vehicle uh, inside a building, of course. So uh, that is the small tornado warning. It goes for another six minutes. This storm will continue its way eastward with time. The other storm we're watching closely is located there near Stillwell. Uh, I'm going to switch to our, our uh, there's our new velocity signature from our Fort Smith radar and still kind of a broad area of rotation, but still a formidable storm has some lightning associated with this. The latest rotation has taken it to the north of Stillwell. That's good news for Stillwell, but still be taking cover if it does shift to the south. We have a new track on this. In fact, as we uh, look at the shear rate and this is taking it just to the north of Stillwell over England is where we find that and it's moving towards Lincoln at 504 and Prairie Grove at 523. Uh, so once again, there's a look at that rotation. Station 9 is pointing that out to us at this point, and this continues its way also towards Peavine as well, right along U.S. Highway 59. That's the zone where this is in Adair County between Westville and Stillwell, approaching the Arkansas line here in the next 20 to 15 minutes or so. 
that storm not necessarily producing much hail, perhaps not even producing widespread damaging winds, but that is always an associated risk with any storms that are tornado warned as well. So that's the latest on that particular storm. Uh, we are watching a few more storms. Uh, we've not checked in with JD in a moment, so I want to talk about that cell down across portions of Sequoia County. That continues its way uh, to the north and east. There's a look on the uh, reflectivity mode. It's moving right over Belfonte. Um, JD, if you're with me right now, uh, any update on the storm in northeastern Sequoia County? JD, uh, do you have an update on the storm northeast of uh, Salisaw at this time? JD may be in a difficult cell phone zone, but in any case, we're going to keep watching that cell. It has a risk for hail up to the size of quarters and also the 60 mile per hour wind gusts as well. We're keeping an eye on the storms uh, coming in across Adair County. We still have the tornado warning there until uh, 445, 430 for the cell coming in on Locust Grove. Uh, our storm teams are all over these storms, keeping an eye on them as any of them could end up intensifying and producing a brief spin up, which is why we're uh, keeping an eye on this and also going wall to wall right now with our coverage just in case that does occur because we have multiple tornado warnings and one severe thunderstorm warning. If you're in Tulsa, this is all to your east. It appears the threat will remain to the east along and east of Highway 69 at this time. We do have that watch in effect until 9 o'clock this evening. Um, Stacia, do you have any uh, update on any of the storms at this point in time? Well, up to the north of that Locust Grove storm, Mike, the rotation has seemed to maybe tighten up just a little bit to the south near Cedar Crest, just on the east side of Cedar Crest. So I think we should put a track on that as well. Uh, that's something that we should be watching. So I'm going to drag that up to the northeast and we're on links three here. OK, great. So I'm going to drag that up to the northeast at about 20. So this is also an area that we're watching that could make a run in to the Grove area about five o'clock. So these are again in an environment where we could have these spin ups. You notice that on the map here we have rotation up around Locust Grove. We have some down to the south as well. We have a warning down near Westfield that we've been reporting on just north of Stillwell. So there's a sign of some rotation where the reds and the greens are coming together. That rotation is north of Stillwell well east of Stony Point. This is going to be near State Highway 51 east of State Highway 51 and that is also moving to the northeast so that will cross across across Adair County move across Adair County towards Peavine south of Barron and then over towards Piney as well. So there, there are many storms that we're watching right now some across Adair County. We have a severe thunderstorm down in Sequoia County east of Salisaw that JD is on and then back up to the north here you can see a wide view. Um, the activity that we have, it's all again, as Mike said, east of the metro. There are storms along I-44. Darren is on the north side near Miami. He is watching those storms. Vaughn's in Adair watching storms. And then we have our tornado warned storms now. One near Locust Grove in Mays County and the other one in Adair County near Stillwell. Travis? All right. As we continue coverage, and Mike's been covering along uh, the tornado watch, which is in effect again for east of Tulsa, it will continue for a while longer. But it looks like these storms are moving at a fast enough pace that we're going to be talking about conditions that are going to be favorable favorable for at least calming down over the next hour. Let's take a look at radar and show you what's going on right now. A lot of the shower and thunderstorm activity showing up across the area, still in an area that is to the east of Tulsa, long to the north and east, and we're going to take a closer look at what's going on. Storm teams continue to cover the areas to the north and east and also southeast. Uh, Darren is up in the Miami area at this time as he has a line of thunderstorms. Those are not severe at this time. We do have severe thunderstorms in southeast Kansas. Uh, these are just very heavy downpours of rain with occasionally some moderate uh, potential for some damaging wind gusts. We have had several reports, if you're just joining us, of some uh, potential wind dam damage and also some paths that might have had some damage associated with them. We're looking at the heaviest thunderstorms now just south of Anita. Darren's uh, sitting just south of Miami. And then just south of Anita, a very intense thunderstorm at this time running from around the big cabin area with some hail potential with that as it continues to race to the northeast. And Vaughn right at this time is on the storm that's down to the south that has had it has been strong right around the Adair area and also to the east we have around Langley area and also around the Grand Lake area. We do want you to be advised there's going to be a few of these storms that are going to create mostly just heavy downpours but unfortunately because of the dynamics of the atmosphere right now we continue to look at different uh, areas that could potentially uh, create a couple of spin-ups so we do want the folks to be aware of that. Also down to the south and to the east we continue with the tornado warning that is just moving out of the areas around Locust Grove uh, along Highway 412. That continues to track to the east at this moment and we're going to take a look at a specific area 
Uh, as we look at the uh, tornado warning, which expires at 430, we are at 430 right now, so that expiration has come. So that warning is now going to be gone uh, for that particular storm. Now, we do have a few areas that have a little bit of stronger winds, uh, and that's, I'm going to zoom in, even though there's a green background right there, you can see a couple of spots. We're still at Iron Post and then extending up just to around the Boatman area. These are the areas in which it is continuing to track to the east, so there's no active warnings at this particular moment. We do have the tornado to watch in effect for the area and so we're still watching what's going to happen there because any of these storms that have popped up have had the potential to pre create uh, damaging winds. We do have a few cells that have gone up over Wagner and then down around the areas from Tallahassee and Porter area and then around Spring Hill. Those are not severe. Those are just heavy at this particular moment and uh, right now let's go to Lynx 3. Okay, let's go to Lynx 3 for a quick update and a full screen if we could. And uh, this will give us an idea of what's going on. And I'll have uh, Stacia give us a little bit more information on that. Stacia. Okay, Travis. So we are looking at the storm in Adair County that has moved through the Stony Point area. It has moved through Stillwell, and it does still have uh, a rotation signature there near Peavine. So we're going to put our storm track here on that rotation. And again, this is going to be south of Barron, right along Highway 59, if you're familiar with the area. These storms are moving to the northeast, so this is pretty much on the eastern side of Adair County. It'll head over towards the Piney area, but I think the circulation, if it holds together, would stay just on the north side of Piney. And as it moves to the northeast, it'll get into Arkansas, but that'll be in Lincoln around 504 and Prairie Grove around 522. So it's moving to the northeast at about 20 miles per hour. That's the track that I put on it. And again, that rotation is located right along Highway 59, really to the east. And this is going to be around 774 Road, 770. Uh, and again, that's if you're familiar with the area, that's where that's located. Travis, so just a quick update there All on right. that storm in Ada. I appreciate it very much. So again, the thunderstorms continuing right along the Arkansas border. You're looking at the radar, and this is the Oklahoma-Arkansas line. And so these storms have moved well to the east of Tulsa. So Tulsa is not involved in this. But for folks that are in an area that are in extreme eastern Oklahoma and northwest Arkansas, these storms are more spring-like than anything else. Because of that, there has been circulation with these storms. The dynamics in the upper atmosphere are such that that is leading to uh, the uh, storms actually rotating. And rotation is the first uh, step in getting a severe storm. You're looking at the Tulsa area right in here. We just have ground clutter patterns showing up. The showers have since moved out. So again, a quiet night expected across the area. To the northeast, a new severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for areas where Darren is located uh, from around the Fairland area in Ottawa County, also extreme southeastern portions of Craig County and northern portion of Delaware County on the north end of Grand Lake. Let's go to Darren with a quick update. Darren, what do you have for us? Yeah, Travis, uh, up here uh, on I-44, uh, we're coming up on 8 air. You can see that uh, line of uh, thunder showers that are moving in. Uh, on the eight air area, very ominous looking line. This is this storm up here is more outflow dominant. You can see that uh, outflow feature uh, associated with it. But however, don't don't kid yourself and not think that there's some strong winds in there. We had some earlier that were 55 to 60 miles an hour. So you want to be careful with this storm, Travis. Back to you. All right. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it very much. We just uh, down to the south. Also, we just got a report of an 84 mile an hour wind at Inola when that system was moving through Inola. Uh, and of course, that is, we knew that there was some damage in some of that area. And uh, Brandon had mentioned that earlier. And so we want you guys to be very much aware as far as being across these areas where there's warnings uh, for the possibility of a strong to severe winds as well. And it's not always a tornado that causes the problem. So the Inola area picking up an 84 mile per hour wind that was clocked officially. And so that's one of the stronger winds we've had clocked in a long time. Right now, just southeast of uh, Venita is an area in which we have heavy rain and thunderstorm activity. And uh, at this moment, uh, hail swaths across that area not showing up to be uh, very impressive at all. Uh, but we are looking for, again, severe thunderstorms to continue across an area of eastern Oklahoma and also down to the south and to the east where a tornado warning has been in effect for areas just right around the Westville uh, location, Westville area. We're going to take a look at that in just a moment. As you look down to around Westville, heavy rain and thunderstorms are showing up in this area. And we also have a tornado warning uh, just into Arkansas near Prairie Grove. So these continue on that area. So heavy rain and thunderstorms are showing up in those locations. As we uh, look at the storms down the southeast, uh, some of the storms that are down there, uh, JD is on one of the storms that is located near just north of Salisaw. Uh, JD, uh, are you online? Did you see a Michael? Okay. JD, could you give us an update on that right now? 
Are you there? Can you hear me, Travis? Yeah, I can. Go what? ahead. Okay, My this storm is down. It's way to the here. Afton, I'm sorry. Go ahead, JD. Oklahoma. Are you there, JD? One more time. Are you there, buddy? Um, Travis. Yeah, go ahead, JD. Okay, this storm has a big. Okay. Hey, JD, we're going to wait till you get on a hilltop so we can get a little bit better information. A uh, video's froze. Let's go back to radar, links four, if we could. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the shower and thunderstorm activity uh, that's right where he is located. Now, he is in an area that is not real conducive uh, to cell phones, obviously, and to signals coming out of this area because he's in hilly terrain. Uh, this storm, J Darren? Yeah. Let's go up to Darren right now. Could we slide to the north? And uh, let's go up to Darren with the latest update up to the northeast around the Grand Lake area. Darren, what do you have? Your funnel just appeared and lasted for about 45 seconds, and then occluded out of that uh, out of that shell cloud traffic. So we're still be watching it back here. Okay, I appreciate it. And uh, is Darren's video coming back? Okay, Darren, if you hear me, uh, your video. We're missing your video. If you could uh, fire back up on that, that'd be great. Um, and then as you look at the uh, thunderstorm again, more p intense part of the thunderstorm is located just to the northeast of Darren. And then th this again is Ottawa County. Uh, and so Ottawa County is just on the northeast side of our viewing area. Uh, we are under a severe thunderstorm warning for this area as well. And that includes far southeast portions of Craig County. And there will be wind gusts to 60 miles per hour plus, as we just said, a report of 84 mile an hour winds, which was an official measurement coming in from our Mesonet site at Inola when these storms came through. That is a very devastating wind. Uh, that will knock out a lot of, uh, of power, and that will also knock down some uh, outbuildings and uh, cause a lot of shingles to disappear. The heaviest of the thunderstorms right now, as you can see, just southeast of Anita, but this thunderstorm does extend back along I-44. And uh, as you look uh, at the whole there's two parts to this one, and this one is just located southeast side of Venita, about three miles, and then also another core that's just to the south-southwest, about five to six miles. This is where we could have some small hail, peat and dime size hail, maybe up to nickel size, and then the winds of 60 miles an hour. Part of this system is going to be moving to the east. So far, uh, reports as far as any hail has been fairly limited, so it's more of a wind and also spinning type of storm system that we're watching as the thunderstorm continue to track to the east. So we want you to just be aware of what's going on. On. Broader picture for a moment uh, gives us a good idea of the thunderstorm activity, again, where it is in relationship to Tulsa. Uh, most of that is continuing to be just into south. We're getting ready to move it into southwestern Arkansas or southwest Missouri, northwest Arkansas. And so the severe weather is where Darren is located. And then further to the south, we're continuing as well. We do have a storm track on Links 3 right now. Let's go to that for a moment and go full screen if we could. And want to just share this with you real quick. The station's put this together for us. But the uh, uh, track, uh, again, Links 3. Three, links three, if we could. Uh, that looks like Vaughn, or is that not Brandon? Um, this is a look. Uh all right, here it is. And so this is the track at this moment that is going to take it off to the east. This is the line of thunderstorms that's on the east side. And you can see the warning. This is the warning area right here. That is where the thunderstorms are right now, obviously. They're going to be moving to the east and over the north end of Grand Lake. So if you're near the Grand Lake area, we do want you to get off the lake, or if you have friends there on the lake, it's probably advisable if you ha they haven't already to go ahead and get out of there. And then also, as we look on up to around the Wyandotte area, Fairland area, uh, these are areas that will be about 504, and then Seneca in uh, southwest Missouri, southeastern Kansas area. Uh, we're talking about hitting around right around 527. And uh, time right now is 439, we'll say 440. Or just rounded up a little bit, and so around Seneca at about 527. All right, further to the south, the heavy rain and thunderstorms continue on these areas. Uh, let's go back to Links 4 for a minute, and we're going to show you uh, what we just had, um, if we could. Can you go to Links 4? And, uh, okay, there's the rain and thunderstorms now down to the south, a little bit further. Heaviest rain and thunderstorms in that southern Delaware County with a few cells that are fairly strong. Uh, we've had the tornado warning on the storm that's been near the Westville area. Uh, so this is located just on the east side of uh, just to, just really south of Westville. Um, and so this is still one that could be uh, causing some problems. We also have one on the state line just east of Stillwell. Uh, so this is just to the east of Barron. And there's enough circulation here that that still could be a potential tornado or wind damage event for you guys. So as we look at this, as this is tracking off to the east towards the Summers area, uh, Michael has for us, uh, this is a picture came in from Jeremy Philippo. Lippo, 
and uh, on I, the tornado that happened at Inola, it's almost unbelievable to see it. Let's go to uh, one. Yeah, Lynx one. So this is what it looked like. There wasn't a warning on it at the time, was there? At the time. So this storm developed very rapidly, and uh, as you can see, cone coming down to the ground here. So we had an actual tornado on the ground, and our Inola site not too far from the city of Inola, as we said, reported 84 mile an hour winds. So we believe that that was fairly close to the the pathage uh, path uh, of that. And uh, what it was. Uh, Stacia, can you look over on chat and see what the, uh, it was, four, was it 412 and uh, what road that was with that, where that uh, happened? Anyway, so that did occur, and that means that in the atmosphere, it was, there was enough circulation to get these babies going. And today we thought, eh, there's a chance that there could be a few isolated severe storms, but this took off and went rapidly into severe weather mode, and uh, that's where we find it right now. Let's go back to Lynx 4 for a minute, and uh, we're looking at uh, what's going on right now with strongest areas of where these are what we call the sheer swath, and so this gives us an idea of where some of the stronger storms are right now with stronger damaging wind potential across the area. Thanks, Michael, for getting that up for us. And thanks to Jeremy for uh, getting that posted to us as well. Uh, so this is still intense thunderstorms around the Choteau area. And so that's just east of Inola. And as those thunderstorms continue to track to the east and northeast at a pretty good pace, we're looking at uh, anywhere from around the Mazy area and then extending back on over to around Murphy. And so these uh, are the thunderstorms we're going to keep eye on. Uh, let's go ahead and Stacia, if you would, let's come back over here and uh, let's go back to the south and to the east a little bit further and uh, look at the thunderstorms down southeast. Uh, and so we are looking at the tornado warnings, uh, pretty much almost gone. Uh, let's JD, uh, Michael, can you check and see if JD is available? If he's uh, if he's he's still. Still not okay. Uh, where JD is located uh, at this time, and Stacia, if you would uh, come back in uh, for a moment, and let's go to where JD is located. As this storm moves out, this is uh, one that could be producing hail and some damaging winds. This is moving out of our viewing area as we speak. There's a severe thunderstorm warning on this particular part of the cell. It did have a hail core with it before, and then back to the north one, if we could. It's up near Stillwell, uh, just east of Stillwell now. Uh, that continues to move off to the east. Tornado warning is uh, now pushing off. It is kind of getting out of the tornado worn area. Circulation feature with this. If you could be at SRX and uh, try to do a uh, SRV for us on that, and so we still have strong rotation indication off of that. Uh, so what we're looking at is that's crossing the, the county, or I should say, a state line county line, state line, uh, and that's just south of Westville. So if you're near the Westville area, we do want you to be very careful because the potential for you right now of having a tornado, a strong damaging wind event is still very high around the Sumner's area, and that is into Arkansas. So that's just on a border of our viewing area. Uh, so that will continue to track to the east. So the circulation feature is evident, and we probably, uh, if we don't have a tornado, we probably have some wind damage potential. These are not large thunderstorms. Uh, as we think of them in the spring context of things, these are just very intense thunderstorms and they have caused uh, enough circulation with that that I do believe we could see the tornado warning issued one more time for this storm as it moves off into northwest Arkansas into Washington County. So just be aware as we start to push that, that could move toward the Fayetteville, Arkansas area if it holds together long enough. Back to the north a little bit further, this is an area as well, it's all under a tornado watch and we have uh, Vaughn right now who continues to cover the thunderstorms, uh, that he's right around the eight air area, and Vaughn is on the back side of one of these uh, areas. And now he's not in the Warren area, but he is on a strong storm. Vaughn, if you're with me, can you give me an update of what you've been seeing? Yeah, Travis, um, this storm doesn't look very significant on radar. Uh, if, I'll, if I can stop here and turn and get you a shot, the updraft is um, it's increasing rapidly in strength right now. Uh, I've got rising scud into it. I'm going to pull over here and get you a shot. But the the, uh, the 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 bottom of the base has scud that's rising up into it, and it is strengthening right now. Uh, and this is the storm that is, uh, I believe it's to the um, the west of Langley. And uh, hold on, I'm getting ready to give you a shot right now of it. But uh, it is it's pulling in scud right now at the bottom, the base of the storm. Um, and I believe it's, it's intensifying pretty rapidly right now, but we're going to stay on it. Uh, it doesn't look very impressive on radar. I understand that. Uh, but like you said, these things have a lot of shear to work with, and it doesn't take much for these things to form a funnel and a tornado pretty quickly. Yep, and we see it perfectly from uh, what you're pointing out there. Uh, again, as uh, you're looking at this area right in here, and this is where he is. Uh, the, this is the updraft into the thunderstorm itself where Vaughn is pointing out. And if you notice, 
you can just kind of see what's going on with this ever so slowly. And that scud that's right in that area also is indicative of, and as he mentioned, there's a lot of circulation going on to where this thunderstorm as it's rising is starting to turn or rotate. And that allows for that air, that column of air that's coming up uh, from the surface, pushing on up into it, starting to spin. And so that's why we're seeing little fingers coming out of that. Vaughn, I'm going to go back to you for a minute. Uh, as you've watched that, has that been going on pretty strong for just the last little bit? Yes, um, it actually kind of uh, decreased in intensity uh, after it came across Highway 69. And then as soon as it got east of Adair, it's, it's like you see now. It has just been, it's, it, you can tell it's rotating uh, quite rapidly here at the base. But I'll tell you what, radar will not, would not show you that. Uh, radar right now does not look very impressive, but I believe this thing is, is increasing in intensity. And we're going we're gonna to stay on it because it could be a dangerous storm. All right, Vaughn, thanks. I appreciate it. So once again, let's take a look at uh, radar from Lynx 3. And this is Storm Track uh, Station has for us now. And as you look at that storm, it doesn't look like too much, but it is in an environment, uh, unfortunately, that is conducive to potential for some strong to severe winds. And maybe we'll see what happens as it rotates. Any storm that starts to rotate has a lot of updraft, so that gives it a lot more oomph or a lot more power. So that's where some of the issues are coming in. Storm track right now, I get off the picture so you can see it. Langley coming in at 501, and then uh, Disney at 507. So these are areas right on the lake. So if you have friends at the lake, uh, again, if you want to give them a call or if you're watching from the lake, be advisable just to keep it here. We're going to be keeping you advised as we start to. Uh, see that rolling right on over the the lake area so uh, be prepared also on uh, links one are you pointing out four let's go back to links four if we could and uh, and here's a look at uh, what's going on right now we do have the tornado watch in effect for areas east of tulsa this will be inclusive from uh, cherokee county you guys aren't quite out of it yet but we'll be dropping counties just on the west side as this continues to move to the east uh, we have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for southwest missouri southeast kansas far northeast oklahoma as we said uh, the tornado warning now has been allowed to expire for eastern oklahoma and is now into an area that is pushing off into arkansas so if you are in these areas just be advised that any of these thunderstorms as they continue to develop and spread to the east with time could be severe. Uh, some of the strongest storms we have at this moment continue to be kind of uh, in the northeast sections of our viewing area and then right along that leading edge as it moves from south of Fayetteville down to where JD is just north of Fort Smith. Those are the strong storms. That's where the worst areas of the storms are located at this particular moment. Uh, stations watching this north side as well. Let's zoom in a little bit more on this northeast side if we could for a moment. And what we're going to look at is from around the Venita area. And you see where Darren is located and then also where Vaughn is located. And so as we look at these uh, two areas and even down to Grand Lake, we have heavy rain and thunderstorm activity right now. Let's go to uh, Darren for an update. And then we're going to get a storm track from station just a minute. Darren, what do you have from your position? Darren, you there? Yeah, right now, Travis, we're coming through Bonita, and off to the west, clear blue skies. Off to the east, however, you have that ominous-looking, you know, severe storm that we've been talking about there. I have not run across any hail associated with this storm today. Uh, biggest wind gust we've had was uh, 58 miles an hour, Travis. All right. Thanks, Darren. Appreciate it. Stacia, what do you have for us on that line of th thunderstorms Darren's on? All right, Travis, we have this line tracking up to the northeast for you. The latest storm track. Here we go across the across the Grand Lake area. This is on links three. Thank you. All right. So that leading edge is going to move into the Fairland area here about 451. That's only a few minutes away. There's going to be some strong winds, very heavy rainfall. And again, we're just watching because the environment is still conducive for some circulations. Now down to the south here near well off to the west, I should say near Seneca at 5 5 Neosho at 535 and again this is going to cross the river it should cross just north of Grove but it's going to or excuse me the river and Grand Lake Right now, there's a heavy thunderstorm moving in on Bernice. That storm is actually severe. And again, you have one storm around Grove, but it's just down to the southwest of Grove. So that's going to move over <laughs> your area, and you'll have to be prepared for that storm. But the track right now moving to the east northeast at about 20 miles per hour. Fairland at 451, Wyandotte 455, Diamond 527, Anderson about 546. So this is a line of storms that extends across Ottawa County, back through Delaware County. There's even storms back towards Towards Benita, which Darren is watching. There is a storm east of Adair, which Vaughn has been watching. We talked to Vaughn a few minutes ago, and he was watching as that updraft really started to strengthen. Now that storm is headed towards the Langley area. It doesn't look like it has much, much uh, punch to it, but of course these storms can ramp back up again. So Vaughn's going to watch that. 
And down around Rose, we have some heavy thunderstorms that is just to the west of Little Kansas right now. And we have some a heavy core there, possibly some heavy rain and maybe even some small hail that is just east of Locust Grove. So again, we have the line of showers and storms in our far eastern counties now, Travis. They're tracking slowly but surely and slowly, I mean, at 20 miles per hour to the east northeast. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. And we're going to go back to links one. Just a minute. If you're joining us, uh, we did have a tornado actually touch down the ground near Maisie uh, and near. I know this says Inola tornado, but we believe it could have been around the Maisie area, which is near Inola. Uh, and so you can see the per, uh, unfortunately a perfect cone, as we'll call it on the ground. And uh, so there was some uh, one of our storm trackers, Brandon. Uh, he mentioned that he did have debris or some insulation in the air. So we're looking at that and we're going to take a closer inspection on what happened in that particular area. We do have as well still a potential for a few strong to isolated severe storms now mainly to the far eastern parts of our viewing area. So if we go back to links four for a minute, uh, we're looking at a uh, right around areas from this. Here's the Tulsa radar around the Inola area and then we're looking at the severe storms right up to the northeast. So this is still a very intense area of thunderstorms across Ottawa County and then extending across Grand Lake area. Rain, thunderstorms, heavy, heavy downpours of rain. Um, and then as you see where Vaughn is located, he's pushing in on Langley right now. Now, hey, Vaughn, if you would, can you give us an update on, uh, uh, nope, wait on him for a minute, okay. Um, and uh, because he is in the position right now as he's crossing over around the Strang area. So we're watching the storm at Pensacola. And uh, can you give me a shear velocity, velocities or shear at this moment? And uh, we're going to look at, uh, see if we can find anything. We don't have anything strong as far as strong winds on the ground. And then also as we look at uh, primarily this is just uh, an area that has gusty winds 20, 30 miles, maybe up to 40 miles an hour, uh, but specifically no rotation with that cell that we can see that Vaughn's been on. So we're going to keep watching that particular area. Uh, the, the, again, they look kind of weak. Vaughn mentioned this just a little bit ago that even if they look weak, they were still being nasty. And uh, that's what we were this afternoon. Mike said that we were keeping an eye on them, and then all of a sudden uh, they go and get a little crazy. And so they ran into a perfect environment where the storms could rotate a little bit better, and uh, they started looking more dangerous, and that's what's happened. So right now, severe thunderstorms from around the southeast of Anita. Uh, so if you look at these areas, and we sent around the success area, and uh, Stacia, if you would, uh, we go down to City Street a little bit, and is that on our radar? Ours, okay. And then, uh, so what I want to do is just look a little closer, the more intense area. So there's East 290 Road. Let's go full screen, if you would, for me, please. And um, so this is Highway 82, as you can see where we're located right in here, and with the Grand Lake area. Uh, this is going to continue to track to the east, uh, and uh, just as that happens, shower and thunderstorm activity will continue to push off to the east for a while. Now, these cores are extremely heavy downpours of rain. We could have some gusts of wind. They're pretty high. Uh, can we look at velocities uh, at this time station? Uh, I want to take a look at the velocities. We can take it out I and X. And, uh, and so there's no, and you can stay in close, that's good right in there. Um, so as we look at that, uh, there's no specific rotating areas on this storm. Now our guys are just on the west side so that they can look into it and uh, give it a pretty good perspective of where that is. And so as you look, you know, th this is still hanging in there. And uh, can you go to level two, uh, see if there's a uh, ability to see if we can find that on there. So uh, as we look, the heaviest of rain and thunderstorm uh, activity still in the same spot and there is enough shear in this area that there could be some damaging wind potential still as it moves across the Grand Lake area so just be aware of that and it's just getting ready to move Grand Lake is I'm gonna get out of the picture I'll use my hand just right there down the lower right hand corner so uh, that part of the system is moving off to the east so we do want you to just know that that's pretty intense storm okay let's go back and take a look at thunderstorm activity and what's happening across the areas to the north and east so severe thunderstorm warnings continue in this area and that's for another 30 minutes um, uh, for that's 5:30, so that's uh, we're sitting at uh, yeah about another 30 minutes uh, with a Grand Lake, pretty much the northern half of Grand Lake, the south side. Vaughn still watching that. Back to the south, uh, the storms that were uh, intense and potentially severe. There's around Gravit. We still have this line building. And so this line, as it builds, we're going to have to watch that. JD has been down on the storm uh, that has been moving off into Arkansas. And you can see how those have cleared the area right now. So the warning that was in effect for far northeastern portions of Sequoia County, that's over with. The storm is out of that area and it has moved off to the east into areas just to the north of Fort Smith. And let's come back along this uh, line here. And Michael, we're going to have to kind of prepare to watch for this next line with Ron. 
and JD, I guess. Uh, and so as you see this line, even though it's not very strong, it appears to be getting a little bit stronger. And this is the main boundary that's going to be sweeping through and then killing the atmosphere behind it. Uh, so there isn't going to be a whole lot there. But uh, this is just to the east of Fort Gibson uh, Lake right now, and, and then extending from uh, just west of Lost City. And then also another cells back to the south a little bit around the Taylor Ferry area. So these are increasing in intensity a little bit. So each one of these cells that's running into some winds that are coming in out of the southeast. And then we have winds that are up in the upper levels of the atmosphere coming in from out of the west or northwest. And so as that air is rising, it's kind of helping get it a spinning mechanism. So we do think that there's a possibility that that could happen as well. Uh, so with the heavy thunderstorms and they continue to develop in these areas along this line. And let's zoom in all the way down starting along the line around Tallahassee. And, uh, we're looking at most of these are not going to be a big deal, but if you're with us and you're kind of like, eh, what's going on? Uh, these cells do have the chance to become more intense. So this is around the Fort Gibson area, and you see these are just going to go over the lake. Some of them are on the lake right now. And so some gusty winds. Lightning strikes uh, are minimal with this at this time. So as you look minimal, that means zero. I guess in this case. Uh, so as we go along the leading edge of this and move back to the north over the lake and then head back a little bit further to the northeast heading into Cherokee County. Uh, we get into Lost City area, rain and thunderstorm cell uh, sitting near Eli and then just to the northwest of Lost City. And then as that goes up along this line still, you can see that we have one more area that's cell near Pegs. Now these are not severe, but these are very heavy and they're developing. And so as this anybody to the east of this is going to have to keep an eye on this with us and a little bit further to the north and to the east also showing more heavy rain and thunderstorm activity. This is a bigger cell and this one has a little bit more indication. Uh, as we look at it, let's go full screen on this guys if we could. Um, and so where we are, we're just near the county line. Uh, so we're just uh, just right on the county line uh, from Cherokee and then extending back to the north into uh, Delaware County and also southeastern uh, Mays County. And so this cell right now, let's do a velocity check if we could on that uh, as this is starting to show a little bit higher probability of at least having uh, is that how INX or? Okay, uh, and so there's, this should have, and come back um, if you would, yeah, and then uh, go to uh, uh, shear rate, I don't think is going to be uh, very impressive as of yet, but um, you can pull it down, yeah, a little bit, and we'll see if, uh, so there is a little bit of indication, so that's just kind of starting. So this is part of the cell, it's just south of Rose, and then that is to moving toward the leach area. And so there's uh, some indication that this is increasing in intensity. So we're gonna watch this a lot closer as to what is happening with this particular cell and the one to the north. So these are pushing into an environment that is, even though there's been thunderstorms there, usually when thunderstorms go through an area, it kind of kills the atmosphere. That's not the case today because we have a very spring-like weather atmosphere going on. And we really felt that it was probably gonna be to the east before it got uh, charged up and going, but it is rolling right along. So this is that line of showers and thunderstorms right now in this area. And that continues. Uh, we're up around the leach area, heavy rain uh, continuing. You start to see some lightning strikes with the northern end of this right now. So with a shower and thunderstorm activity, just know that uh, Lake Uchia area, and then that's going to be moving to the east northeast and that whole line of showers and thunderstorms going pretty strong. So if you're in advance of it, we want you to be aware of it up at Jay to the east side of Jay. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at and if we can, uh, can you zoom out for just a second? Uh, station for a second and then uh, we're going to go to you for a storm track in just a minute. Um, a little bit further for a second. There you go. So these areas of rain and thunderstorms continue to be quite intense and they're gaining uh, some momentum unfortunately, which means that that could be some problems. And Stacia, you have a storm track for us? I do, Travis. I all have right. a storm track on the line from Jay all the way down back to the southwest. As these storms continue to move to the northeast, again, the environment is still favorable for them to get stronger and could potentially cause us an issue. So let's take links three here. See this track. And again, this is the latest track. Right now, the storms are not severe, but we have to watch these very closely. That's been the story for today is the storms don't look that bad, but they can still be uh, pretty problematic and they can get problematic very quickly. So we have to be watching and have to be on guard. So from Lake Uchi all the way down to the south. This extends east of Rose through southern Delaware County, and it's on the northwest sides of Cherokee County. It's still north of Tahlequah and back to the west near Holbert. It is on the east side of Fort Gibson Lake and back towards OK. So this will be in the Holbert area at about 5.05. Again, you have rain on the north side of Holbert. You have a heavier cell farther up, just a few miles up to the northwest of you. This will be in Little Kansas about 5.09. Colcord about 516. Tahlequah, you could be dealing with these storms at about 535, so that's in about half an hour from now. And Chewy will be about 537. Gentry 
and Decatur. That'll be about 547. So again, the storms are, if anything develops south of OK, continuing to build south, maybe back towards Muskogee. That could impact the Muskogee area and it could impact Fort Gibson, and that would be kind of on the south side of the line. But right now, the storms extend from OK back up towards the west side of Holbert, east of Fort Gibson Lake, and that continues up towards Pegs, up towards Rose, and this will be in Little Kansas. Notice our storm tracker, Brandon Wells, he looks like is close to 412, just west of Little Kansas right now. Tracking that line, there could be some pretty strong winds embedded within this, and we also have our storm trackers out monitoring all over across the area. And this is have light rain out to your west, but again, these storms are several miles back to your west. It'll be in call court about 516. So this is a wide view again of the line that has developed from J back towards OK. We have Ron who's in Stillwell. Ron's going to head back to catch this line as it continues to move to the east. We can monitor that for you. JD is down along the Oklahoma Arkansas line. The tornado warned storm that has moved again into Arkansas, but there have been a few cells back towards Muldrow and down along the Kerr Reservoir. That's in northern LaFleur County there just west of Spyro. So we'll watch those. Up to the north, we have our strong to severe storms. These are the strongest ones we have right now, and this is right around the Grove area. It has crossed over Grand Lake, so Grove right now is in the thick of things, and this storm has some very heavy rainfall. We'll take a look at velocities. You probably have some winds, uh, possibly up to 40, maybe 50 miles per hour. It looks like there might be some stronger winds there on the west side of Grove. So I'm going to pixel query this. Now keep in mind the radar site is very far away. This is looking high up in the atmosphere, so this is wind above the surface. It's at 51 miles per hour. Some of that could mix down and cause some damage, um, but right now that's high up above the surface. So that's in the upper levels of the atmosphere, but those strong winds moving in on Grove at this time. And so within this area, we have strong to severe storms up across Ottawa County, Northern Delaware County, back towards Bernice, Ketchum and Langley. Vaughn Caster, one of our storm trackers, he is watching that cell near Langley and it looked pretty, uh, pretty potent as it was a several miles back to the west. As it approached Langley, it kind of lost some steam there, but it could easily pick steam back up again, Travis, so it still has to be monitored. Yes, it does, and so as these storms continue to track, remember we do have a tornado watch in effect for you guys off in the eastern part of our viewing area. Not in Tulsa. Tulsa, we're clear, but uh, you can see our storm trackers across the region, and here's the tornado watch. It includes Craig, Ottawa County. It's extending through Delaware and back into Mays County, and then that extends back to the south to Cherokee, Adair, and Sequoia County, all of our northwest Arkansas counties, and of course, southeast Kansas and all of uh, portions of Missouri. This is a storm system that we had anticipated would get strong, potentially severe, but the, uh, most of the analysis said, ah, oh, it'll be far northeast corner, but uh, we did get a report of a tornado, and if you're just joining us, we had a tornado. Uh, I want to go just briefly to uh, Lynx 1, if we could. Uh, if you're just joining us, this was a tornado that happened just to the southeast of Inola and it touched down for just a brief period of time, but it was a real tornado. Tornadoes can happen any month of the year in Oklahoma. Unfortunately, it happened today, and we had a more of a spring-like environment uh, across the area, so that's what led to this, and it, even though it didn't last very long, it's still a sign that uh, when the atmosphere is that unstable, things get pretty crazy, and that's what's going on. Back to radar for a minute, and Lynx, uh, what? Four? Four? Lynx four? Okay. And uh, as we look at uh, what's going on here, this gives us an idea where the strongest cells are at this point. And uh, this is at 502 right now. Yeah, that's the shear cell. Yeah. Okay, you're just talking about the storm itself. Okay. Yeah, we were just, uh, in fact, Alan and I were just talking about that. Alan Crone's in the house uh, helping us as well. And we're talking about uh, this was the thunderstorm that came up across the zone. And this just went to the southeast of Inola and went to the northeast. We also had one, if you could, stay, go a little bit further to the north. Um, and we had uh, the, we had two of them here, uh, one that just crossed from developed near Claremore and then went across I-44 here, and then we also had one around the Uluga area, and then that moved up. Okay, and then let's go to links two for a second, if you could, uh, and uh, look at it. So there, here's a look uh, again at uh, the closer inspection. This one was just southeast of Chelsea, just to the north of Foyle, and you can see how this just developed. This was about 3:44. Uh, when this moved right through and it's, these have been just really brief and just quick and so we're looking at this the data comes in and if you notice that was like a one or two minute time span well that's about how much data it takes about a minute or so for the data to get th through the system and so we have our live radar so we get to look at that but I mean I'll tell you what that just went from nothing to something real quick here's where Alan has the other one just southeast of uh, Inola at this time and uh, I should not say at this time this was earlier this afternoon about 334 to 336 and so as that went from just 
southeast Vianola across. This is Highway 412, and then it just kind of hung in there, but it uh, weakened some as it moved to the northeast and then gradually just kind of poofed a little bit. Uh, but this was the area in which it just rapidly developed. So as we look at what's going on, shower and thunderstorm activity continues across much of the area. Let's go back to Lynx 4 for a minute. Thanks, Al. And uh, we're looking at thunderstorm activity that's still going strong across areas of southeastern Oklahoma, eastern southeastern Oklahoma, more east central Oklahoma and northeast Oklahoma. We continue with our warning. Uh, for you guys up in Ottawa County, also extending across southeastern Craig County, still with that cell there, and then also just right around the Grove area. So this is the only active real weather we have at this moment. Uh, we do have uh, Vaughn who's uh, been tracking on the storms, and I'm going to try. Uh, Michael, is Vaughn available, do you think? He is? Okay. Um, what we're going to do is you can see Vaughn is located down by Langley. Let's go down to uh, that location first. So these thunderstorms, again, most severe is from Grove to the north. So if you're around Grand Lake, we still want you to be aware. Hopefully the boats are off the water and everything else. Uh, but he is low coming up right across the area on Highway 82 coming up into Langley. Vaughn, if you're with me, can you give me a quick update on what you're seeing? Yeah, these, these two cells have just developed quite rapidly. There's one to the south of Langley and one just to the east of Langley and they have developed very rapidly. The updrafts, uh, you can tell that they are exploding. So we're going to, we've got to stay on these. Uh, I know it's a difficult area here, but uh, we're going to stay on these as they track to the east. So far, these are just putting out some really heavy rain, brief, brief spurts of heavy rain, but uh, they look pretty ominous as they move as they move to the east. Uh, Travis, back to you. All right. Hey, Vaughn, thanks. Appreciate it. Darren is also in the vicinity, uh, and he's just a little bit further to the north. Uh, he has been in those storms for a little while, and Darren's uh, uh, backtracking a little bit to, toward the prior area, and there's a little cell that uh, where Darren is located right now. Hey, Darren, quick update. Have you seen anything so far as far as any tracking any damage or anything like that? You there, Darren? Okay, don't know. All right, Michael says he doesn't, can't, can't get a signals from him right now. Um, okay, good. And then uh, where Darren is located right now, he's right on the areas where we have the thunderstorm. Um, we just have one cell going up. But notice to the east, that's where the heaviest rain and thunderstorms are located right now. So that's around the Langley area and Vaughn's on that area. Then up to the north. Let's go back in the severe thunderstorm warning area if we could. Again, a severe thunderstorm warning continues in effect till 530. We're at 507. Heaviest rain and thunderstorm activity is kind of clustered. Really, the, there's a couple really big clusters, and those are just in the far northeast reaches of our viewing area. But if you are in these areas up around the Miami, east of Miami area, just Ottawa County in general, this is a meaty thunderstorm at this moment moment. Very heavy, heavy thunderstorm. Okay. And then uh, down to the south a little bit further uh, from Fairland. And then just on the east side of Grand Lake. Let's zoom in around the Grand Lake area just a little bit if we could for a moment. And so if you're up here and around the Grand Lake area, we've already had this one cell come through uh, that has now moved up into the Grove area. This cell is very intense, very localized, very heavy rainfall. Is that on our radar at this moment? And uh, let's go to SRX and uh, look at uh, uh, velocities if we could for a moment. Um, and so that's not looking quite the same as far as reflect, or I mean, as far as velocities. Can you try INX as well? And uh, as we look at that again, this has traveled across the the lake. So, and can you see if there's any low shear uh, in this storm yet? And um, we're going to take a look and see how. Now there's there is in these areas. So right in the main part of these thunderstorms, it hasn't taken much shear, uh, as we say, to get these uh, storms going. And we had the tornadoes I was showing you a picture of. Uh, so if you're on the east end of Grand Lake now, and then also back to reflectivity, uh, the rain and thunderstorms coming in on the north end around the Bernice area to Cleora, these are not severe, but those are very, very heavy. So we're gonna, you have to keep an eye on it because there's potential still there for some pretty intense storms. A little further to the south along the uh, severe, uh, along the thunderstorm line itself, uh, and you can see a couple of those cells where Vaughn is located. These have increased in intensity. Uh, we have another heavy cell just east of Lake Uchi, and so that continues to track to the east as well. And then back further to the south, rain and thunderstorms very heavy. And uh, so this gets down to where Brandon is located on 412. So he's watching these cells right here from Leach and also down to around the Rocky Ford area. That's kind of northern Cherokee County, southern Delaware. Brandon, if you're with me, would you give me a quick update? Travis, right now we are on 59 just to the east of uh, Kansas. Uh, looking to the west, uh, not seeing anything real organized, just a bunch of scary looking clouds. However, uh, the cell that's just around Twin Oaks, there is a bunch of rising scud. 
So we're going to watch this area just in case something tries to get carried away, Travis. But right now, everything's good here at our location. Back to you. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. So uh, that's what we're looking at right in that area. Uh, also, as you're looking at the thunderstorms rolling along, this is Dar that was Darren's video this for a minute as he's near the prior area. Here's where Brandon is located uh, from Little Kansas and then from Twin Oaks. So he's looking back. That video that he has had is looking back at these cells and then that goes back on down to the south and west. So these are going to continue to track to the east. We're under a tornado watch for this zone. I know you say tornado watch, August, rain. I had three inches of rain. It was like unreal. And uh, let's go to uh, Lynx 3. Uh, Stacia has an update on the storm track for those particular cells. Stacia. That's right, Travis. Al and I are tracking the storm as it moves towards the Little Kansas area. So here's the latest track on that. So as it moves off to the east northeast, still at about 20 miles per hour, this will be in Kansas, Little Kansas at 514. Call cord, you're on deck at 520. Now, this storm is going to have some very heavy rainfall, possibly some gusty winds, and Brandon is monitoring. He did mention that he's got some scary looking clouds and that updraft probably continuing to intensify. Decatur at 547, that's off into Arkansas. And this will be in Gentry about 549, Siloam Springs and West Siloam Springs. That's at about 551 to 550. The leading edge right now of those thunderstorms, this is near the call cord area back towards Cloud Creek. It is west of call cord by a couple miles and probably have some lightning and again of course heavy rain and some gusty winds very turbulent air off to the west of Brandon he has been looking back towards Twin Oaks and Leach and again he mentioned that possibly that updraft starting to strengthen with this one this is the heaviest rains right along the Cherokee Turnpike near 550 Road and that's also near 570 Road so right there at that intersection near Rocky Ford there might be some small hail within that but very heavy rainfall as well so again we have to monitor this but we have Brandon there near Little Kansas monitoring this storm and the track on that It'll be in Kansas here. The heaviest rain is about 514. Right now you have rain on the north side of town. Some very heavy rainfall. It is in a line, though, that extends back from the east side of Lake Uchi near the J area. It extends across south central Delaware County and then back into portions of Cherokee County. Still up to the north of Tahlequah, but right now Holbert is in the thick of things, getting some very heavy rainfall. But the strongest storm, stronger than the storm in Holbert right now, is down to the southwest on the south side of the lake, east of OK and north of Fort Gibson near Mallard Bay on the east side there of Mallard Bay at 251 and Highway 80. It looks like that storm might have intensified in the last scan or two. So we'll have to monitor that. I'll put a track here on this entire line for you. And I'm going to do it live, so bear with me. I'm going to draw the line on that leading edge, and then I'm going to take these storms up to the east, northeast at about 15, really maybe up to 20 miles per hour. We'll take the average at about 17. So this would put it in Tahlequah at about 548. Chewy around 546. So here's the Tahlequah area. Again, the storm is near Holbert. It'll be in Tahlequah at 548. Up to the north near Chewy. It'll be in the Chewy area at 546. Now those heavy rains are on the north side of Little Kansas now where Brandon is located and it should be heading towards West Siloam Springs near the Oklahoma Arkansas line at about 608. I can show you velocity, see where those stronger winds are located right now, and there might be a few pockets there where your winds are about 30 to 40 miles per hour. But the line so far, Travis, not severe, but it could easily become severe as it continues moving east. I uh, appreciate it, Stacia. Appreciate it a lot. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're, we're looking at the thunderstorms. We've uh, our severe thunderstorm warnings, and our tornado warnings are ending right now. Let's uh, widen out just a little bit more. The uh, Grand Lake area is still the concern, uh, and that's mostly moving to the north and east. This line we're going to focus on big time. Uh, we have our newscast coming up. What time tonight? Is it after? It is supposed to be at 530 if we don't have a uh, golf run long or something. Uh, but uh, we do have this line of thunderstorms continuing to develop. So we're going to be back on the air if necessary. Let's go to Grand Lake just for a quick update uh, for you guys just to make sure that you're, you're uh, in the know. Uh, this is just to the east of Grove now. This is the heaviest thunderstorm. This will be heavy rain, winds to 60 miles an hour, moving into Missouri. And uh, so this is an area in which heavy rain, thunderstorm activity, gusty winds, quite possible. So if you're just east of Grove and uh, eastern portions of uh, northeastern Delaware County, and then also up in Ottawa County, let's slide a little bit further to the north. And you can see that uh, this area, it's already to the east of Miami and uh, around the Wyandotte area. So that continues to push away. Overall, though, this line of thunderstorms back to the south and west. I'm gonna, let's go down where Brandon is because that's the last thing I want to keep an eye on. He is back further. Keep going past Langley and then get down to his location right there. Uh, so he's on 412. He's looking at this cell. I think I think it's near Rocky Ford or near Leach, south of Leach. And get a quick velocity or shear, if you could, on... Uh, yeah. 
And so that would be the cell near Leach. All right, let's go to uh, Brandon with one more quick update. Brandon, can you give me an update on that storm? Yeah, Travis, we're still here. Uh, as we monitor this, uh, this area of concern, it does begin to appear that it's taking more on of a, more trying to produce more of a wall cloud, but the rotation is still very broad. I don't see any indication of anything that's really organized, but we'll stay with it, Travis. Okay. Hey, I appreciate it very much. Uh, links one, if we could for a moment. Uh, this was a tornado from earlier, if you're just joining us. Uh, this is a tornado that was near Inola this afternoon, uh, just before four o'clock. Uh, we are now at 515, and we've had uh, continuous severe thunderstorms in our viewing area since then. As we're watching News on 6 at 5.30, the earlier edition of this, uh, we want to thank Jeremy for that uh, picture. Uh, again, you can see a cone-shaped tornado. Uh, it stayed on the ground for a while, then uh, dissolved after a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, it did do some damage. We're getting some reports of that now. Uh, back to radar for a quick update on shower and thunderstorm activity, uh, where we're looking at this time. Uh, the shower and thunderstorms have pushed into Arkansas on the east side of our viewing area here. JD is down along some of the thunderstorms that are down around Salisaw at this time. JD is watching this area, so for you folks that are down to the south, uh, these cells are still hanging in there. We're in a tornado watch in the zone right around Sequoia. Quiet County. So let's go to JD with a quick update from just north of Muldrow. JD? Yeah, we're heading back south down towards I 40, Travis. Uh, right now we're getting some pretty heavy rains. The winds are very minimal. Uh, we haven't seen any hail or anything like that. This this one that we're watching right now, uh, we're on the north side, so we can't really see the business end of it. But we're going to travel south and get an eye on it, Travis. Back to you. All right, I appreciate it. And uh, at this time, heavy rain, thunderstorms, new severe thunderstorm. Uh, adjustment to, to the warnings uh, showing up now on radar. You can see uh, as well that uh, now the severe thunderstorm is primarily just eastern portion of Ottawa County and extreme east northeast portions of Delaware County. So this is the extension of the severe thunderstorm and that's an area in which we're watching. JD is uh, way further south. Uh, this warning uh, will continue until 530 uh, and that stretches across areas. So that just from the Grove area, really it's just east of Grove to the north end of the lake and then extending on up to Wyandotte and then moving on up into the northeast corner of the state, uh, just right on the verge of getting out of our viewing area. But if you're in this area, strong winds right now, 60 miles an hour possible with this torrential downpours of rain. And with that will come some issues, obviously related to the fact that as the visibilities are reduced, folks are going to have to watch out what's going on uh, with that particular area. So the rain and thunderstorms uh, also down to the south continue to be relatively strong, just east of Jay. And because we're under the tornado watch, we have to be aware of uh, any of these storms because we did not have a severe thunderstorm or a tornado warning or anything like that when we had our tornado uh, that happened at Inola. It just happened very quickly. And uh, so that was one of those things that developed and as it developed, it just turned into a tornado fast. Further to the south, heavy rains from around the J area. Uh, Brandon's on that storm, still around uh, Little Kansas. Let's go over uh, to Brandon for just a minute and get an update from Brandon on uh, what that looks like now. Brandon, any updates on that? Travis, it doesn't look near as organized as uh, about five minutes ago. Uh, right now, we're not receiving any winds. The winds are really calm, uh, just getting some light rain. And really surprising, there's not a lot of lightning. I haven't seen any lightning with this, really, Travis. But we're still, still stay with it, and if we see anything, we'll let you know. All right. Hey, I appreciate it. So again, that's to the north and to the east. Shower and thunderstorm activity still going on, though, along that northern Cherokee County line. And then also a little bit further to the south, some heavy thunderstorms. Let's go over to Stacia with an update on the latest storm tracks for these storms. Okay, Travis, as it crosses through Cherokee County, we have a track here. This is headed towards the Tahlequah area and the cell that you see on the southwest side of Holbert that has come up a little bit. It's starting to get a little stronger. You're going to have some very heavy rainfall and some strong gusty winds in the Tahlequah area right now. The storms are just back to the west, but is expected to be in Tahlequah about 534. Right now, the heaviest thunderstorm within the line here that we're looking at is south of Holbert. So this is going to be on the east side of Fort Gibson Lake. And I'm going to zoom in and you can see exactly where it is. Here's Memory Lane at the top of your screen. And this is Mile Road that's coming down to the south, 780 Road, 790 Road. And this is on the east side of Mallard Bay. So the east side of the lake there. This is our strongest cell that we have in Cherokee County right now. Thompson Corner, this is headed in your direction 
direction because this particular cell is moving up to the east northeast and again it could get into Tahlequah about 534 is the timeline on that one of our storm trackers Ron he is in Tahlequah at this time watching this line of storms it's not so intense but still needs to be watched or some cells up to the north northeast of Holbert in that line that extends north of Tahlequah here so Zooming in near Moody's, there is a pretty strong cell just up to your north northwest, and that's going to continue east. So this will be in the Moody's area here pretty soon. Ellerville, that's going to be a few minutes away from you. Lowry's right in the middle of two cells, one up to your northeast and one down to your southwest. So you might actually get pretty lucky if you're in the Lowry area. But also Scrapper, especially north of Scrapper, you need to be watching that and back towards Little Kansas where Brandon is located. But for the Tahlequah area, Travis, we're really watching that cell just south of Holbert because that could, could get into the Tahlequah area about five. Okay, thanks, Stacia. Appreciate it. Heavy rain, thunderstorms in some of these areas, as you see where Brandon's located. Let's go back further to the north, Stacia, and look at uh, some of this line further north because, again, we still have our severe thunderstorm warning in effect for areas of the northeastern portions of Oklahoma. And Vaughn has been on this storm that's on the uh, east. Now we're on the east side of Grand Lake. Let's go to Vaughn with a quick update. Vaughn, kind of an interesting pictures you've been showing. I've been watching that. Uh, can you give us an update on what you're watching with some of the dynamics going on to play right now with those storms? Yeah, this storm is, is holding its own. It's not really increasing, but it's not decreasing in intensity. It just, I just went across Fence Cola Dam. Like you said, I'm on the east side of the dam now. Uh, but this one is set, it, it needs to be monitored because, like I said, all, all day long, these things can uh, ramp up really quick, especially when they get over here in the, in the uh, higher capes. And, uh, but we're going to keep watching it as it keeps moving to the east and to the northeast. Back to you, Travis. Right, thanks. I appreciate it. So you can see Vaughn as he is kind of getting on the east, southeast sides of the lake. And as he continues to track that one particular storm right across the areas to the east, we do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for areas to the east. So this is the cell we're keeping an eye on at this moment. And as that continues to track, uh, from Disney and off to the east where he is located. Uh, these are the cells we're watching. Further to the north and to the east, that's where some of the heavier rain and thunderstorms are located though. And so these are getting ready to move out of our area. Uh, there's one that's uh, really near Cayega. Uh, and uh, this is uh, going to be continuing to just about get to the uh, state line here. So you can see where it is in our Tiff City. And so as that uh, continues to move away, this is the last of the big cells that is really pretty nasty that we're concerned with. Other ones are moving back to the northeast. Uh, around the Copeland area on the north end of the lake, we do have a heavy thunderstorm for you guys. Uh, we have a heavy thunderstorm advisory. And that warning, though, is still for northeastern portions and eastern portions of Ottawa County and northern portions of Delaware County. Right now, it'd be just the far northeast corner of uh, Delaware County that really has the most intense part of this thunderstorm. Uh, we are at 520, uh, coming up on 523 right now. We're about ready for our newscast. Uh, we will have lots of reports coming in. But further to the south, you can see where Vaughn is located. Still some heavy thunderstorms going on across the eastern portions of uh, Delaware County. That extends now just to the west of Maysville. So just ride along the Arkansas line and then back down to where Brandon is located with heavy rain thunderstorms on Highway 412. Uh, Brandon's keeping an eye on that. Brandon, uh, another quick update before we get ready for our news. What do you have for us on this? Travis, right now we're just uh, getting some uh, light to occasionally moderate heavy rainfall. Uh, the winds have picked up just a little bit, but nothing nothing substantial. And uh, we're just still monitoring this uh, just one area of concern, but we'll stay with it, Travis. All right. I appreciate it very much. And uh, thanks for that report. Again, heavy thunderstorm uh, continues to be, uh, he's running right into that, or that's running right into him. And he has uh, heavy downpours of rain. Michael, does Ron have a... See online, do you know? And then uh, Little Kansas is where that's located. Again, further to the south, tornado watch continues to affect for this whole area, uh, but just heavy thunderstorms going on from around the Moody's area down to Gideon and then back down further to the southwest. And notice I say thunderstorms, and we really have a difficulty in trying to get cloud to ground lightning strikes, so it's not that bad. Here's the uh, areas with the heaviest of the rain. Ron is on the south side uh, and, and looking at that as that's continuing. And that's moving at what speed? Almost due east at 20 yeah, is about? East right at 20. And so he's going to clip this uh, this edge right in here on the south side. This has been the strongest part of this. Uh, so that's uh, just not too far from the Woodall area and the Woodall schools just back to the west northwest. And so that's coming up across there. Let's go to Ron. He's on the south side of Tahlequah right now. Ron, can you give us a quick update on what you have? You bet, Travis. I just I just entered into Tahlequah and now I'm going to the south here at Tahlequah. I'm going to try to catch up with that storm. There's still a, a good south southeast wind that's coming in that's feeding this storm. So it's still feeding it pretty good. 
Uh, doesn't look very intense right now at this time. I'm still kind of scared by trees, but uh, I'm going to get to a point where Travis Ryan stay a little bit better. Back to you. All right, I appreciate it. So we're looking right now, this is looking at velocity. So we do have a little bit of rotation uh, kind of popping up there just around the Thompson corner. And so that's still a pretty intense area, part of the thunderstorm. It's weak, uh, but it is worth noting, uh, especially after what's been going on. Uh, meteorologist Alan Crone had, uh, I just was having conference with him. He's here right now working uh, behind the scenes. Looks like you haven't shaved for a little while, Al. I'm just saying. Is that to, is that the weekend look? Is that the? Oof, he's got. He looks pretty tough. I'm just, to, he didn't comb his hair either for this. Huh? Okay. Station Station knows all this information on the side. Uh, anyway, uh, we do. We want to make sure that you're aware that uh, with this thunderstorm, uh, there's still a chance that with the heavy rainfall, we could have some strong gusty winds with this. Uh, at this point, as we look at some of the reports. That's not bad. Uh, and again, this is off the surface, and uh, so the winds might not even be that, quite that strong. But uh, we still have a potential uh, for this storm to continue to track into an area and environment that's a little bit more friendly uh, for the storms to get stronger. But what Alan was saying, I kind of got, I kind of squirreled there for a minute, uh, but he was talking about how these are such low top thunderstorms. So these aren't our normal spring thunderstorms that are 40,000, maybe 50,000 feet tall. Some of the spring ones early on have not very tall tops, and so they don't look that intense, but yet they're rotating. And so it kind of gives uh, the uh, radar observational person a little bit of a like, what just happened there? Uh, because these thunderstorms are smaller, but that doesn't mean that they aren't as powerful because you just, I just showed you pictures of the tornado uh, just a few moments ago. So we do want you to be aware that the reason why we're still concerned is that even though they're small, they've, had a, they've been able to pack quite a punch. And so that's why the th thunderstorms themselves are worth noting. Right now along West 175 Road, just near Thompson Corner, southeast of Holbert, uh, there should be some fairly strong winds for you uh, with this. So that could be a little pocket of where it's uh, unstable. As it continues down to, it looks like 460 Road, uh, South 460 Road. So right in this zone would be probably the strongest winds coming across with this thunderstorm. Now, and they should be staying just below severe limits, but they're still strong enough that just be aware of how intense it is. Notice. Uh, we're still not having hardly any lightning associated with that. So that's been very unique to see that. All right, broader picture for those of you who are joining us. Uh, meteorologist Michael Grogan is uh, putting the forecast together, and we'll have the complete forecast coming up, which, again, is not uh, void of rain. And it's August, and it's like, what is going on? Uh, so this line of thunderstorms continues. We have a cell south of Stillwell again. Some of the stronger storms have moved off into Arkansas. We still have a cells down to the south and uh, where JD is located. Further to the south, it's relatively quiet at this time, except for just a, one, one or two cells that have fired up just west of Poto and also around the Tallahena area. And the reason I point those out is that they're still in, those are in a good environment for kind of getting strong to potentially severe. So just be noting or will be noting uh, the fact that even though they're outside the tornado watch area, we do want you to just know that those storms too have the potential for severe weather. Right now our severe storms are just about ending for the northeast corner of our viewing area. Uh, we do have the tornado watch still in effect for our counties from uh, extending from Craig, Ottawa, and then back into Mays and then over to Delaware, Cherokee, and then Adair County, and then down to Sequoia County. These thunderstorms will continue to track to the east and as they uh, as they do, we'll drop the tornado watch in the area. So that is going to be good news. Uh, Ron is on some of the thunderstorms right now uh, from around Tahlequah. That looks like a, a good shot Ron has for us now as he's looking at uh, uh, just, yeah. Uh, so he's just on the southwest sides of uh, Tahlequah coming down to just near the Woodall area. And uh, with that line of thunderstorms coming in, we'll be advised for that. Um, we are going to be, uh, um, okay, got it. I got it. Thank you, Al. Uh, and then as that line of thunderstorms comes on through, let's get an update from Ron real quick. Ron, one quick update, if you could. Yes, Travis, I'm just coming into the, the Woodall area here. I'm going to turn around and try to get you a little bit better shot. There is some uh, rapidly rising scud into the storm. A very broad area, Travis, a very broad area. So, I mean, it, could, it looks pretty ominous, but uh, I don't believe there's any, any danger at this time. But uh, I'll keep an eye on it and keep following it on in the telephone, Travis. Back to you. Okay, hey, thanks. I appreciate that, Ron. Let's go on over to Stacia for a minute and get an update on that storm track before we get our newscast really rolling. Stacia. Okay, we can do this pretty quickly. Travis, the strongest portion of that storm is just to the south of Thompson Corner. We have put a track on the entire line, though, that has moved through the Holbert area now, and it is headed towards the town of Tahlequah here. And so you can see, I'm going to zoom in. 
exactly where the strongest part is located again near Thompson Corner down to the south back to the southwest just by a few miles. It is on the west side of Tahlequah and it'll be in town within the next about 10 minutes or so. So you can expect that storm to really be there probably about between 536 and 538. Again, it's on the east side or excuse me, the west side now moving to the east at about 20 miles per hour. The strongest portion of the storm located just on the south side of Thompson Corner. That's where you're going to see the strongest winds here in that brighter shade of red and then also down to the south. There's an area where you have some strong winds as well. So the storm will be in Tahlequah between 536 and 538. Travis. All right. Thanks. I appreciate that. So that's our severe weather coverage as it has continued across the area. Rain and thunderstorms still a pretty good bet. Of course, our news operations have been watching closely about all the things that have been happening today, not only in the world of weather, but also some other news. Let's uh, join Brian Dorman right now. Brian. All right, Chief, thank you very much. We appreciate you and our Oklahoma weather experts, as you can see there, continuing to track these storms moving across green country. And now that the storms are moving out of the area, it is safe enough for Osage Sky News 6 HD to take to the skies. It is now in the air and News on 6 has the largest team of trackers, of course, monitoring the conditions across the area by the ground. We have live team coverage of the storms that have produced tornadoes this afternoon across green country. You're watching News on 6 here at 530 and we have continued team coverage for you and your family making sure that you and your family are safe on this Sunday afternoon. Pictures and phone calls of tornado sightings in Mays and Rogers counties have been flooding the News on 6 newsroom. News on 6's Amy Slanchik is live for us near Inola with the very latest there. Amy. Brian, we are just east of Inola, uh, on the east side of Inola, just south of 412, and I want to show you right now, crews are working to clear up some of the damage to this barn. We just arrived on scene, and so far the folks I've talked to have said that nobody was hurt in this situation here, so thankfully there's no injuries that we know of here on 600 Road. As you can see, they're working to clear up the damage to this barn right here. I want to show you a few pictures that viewers have sent us from their perspective here in Inola. This first one here is from Jeremy Filippo and Shannon Mutri, who I just learned is actually his next door neighbor, sent us her picture here where you can see a funnel as well. And so that was some of the, the views we've seen from Inola out here. So far, this is the only report of damage that we've heard of in Inola. We will work to continue to search and find out if there's any other reports of damage. For now, we're live on the scene on the story in Inola. Amy Slanchik, News on 6. All right, severe weather has continued across much of northeastern Oklahoma, and it's now moving into southwest portions of Missouri. Right at this moment, no severe thunderstorms. You see our trackers all around the area. Rain and thunderstorms go all the way from Fort Smith back to the south. But what we're keeping an eye on is in far eastern Oklahoma, and that's where we do have find our teams showing up. Vaughn has continued to track the storm that's been just around really moving and weakening a little bit as he has continued around the Uche area and then just to the north of Jay. So that's good news. The uh, severe thunderstorm warning that was in effect for Ottawa County, that has been canceled. Uh, back to the south, Brandon is on a storm uh, in Little Kansas. And Brandon, if we could, let's uh, go to you for a moment with a quick update. Uh, what do you have for us? What's going on in your location? Yeah, Travis, right now here uh, on 412, right now the rain just let up as that uh, cell has just passed to my east. Uh, but right now, uh, the winds are calm, Travis, uh, not getting any winds, and uh, starting to see some blue sky to the west. But we're going to get into reposition for the sail up north called for it, and we'll get back with you, Travis. Okay, okay. I appreciate it. And uh, so as you look at uh, radar, you see his picture, and then radar back to the south and to the west a little bit. Still some strong thunderstorms coming up and also moving down from around the Moody's area. And that extends back on down now, moving into the Tahlequah area. Uh, that's where Ron Morton is located right now. Uh, Ron, just a quick update, if we can, from you, just what's going on with that cell. you see anything different? Uh, nothing different has really changed, Travis. I'm just trying to get to a better spot. Of course, you know, here in eastern Oklahoma, trying to find an open area to to uh, see things and see what's going on. It's kind of hard to do with all the trees, Travis. All right, appreciate it, Ron. Uh, thank you very much. And so, again, that's the thunderstorm coming in on town. Not severe, uh, but you're going to get some heavy rain, some gusty winds associated with that. So we've had a few reports of severe weather, minimal reports, but, man, where we had them, that was a kind of a big deal. Uh, wind gusts of up to 84 miles an hour near Inola. This might have been in coordination with the tornado that actually did touch down, we believe, because everything showed up as that. We have the video of that as well. We're going to share more of that with you coming up during the weather. Tonight, though, our chances of storms are ending. Overall, relatively quiet weather. We're looking for temperatures by 10 o'clock tonight in the 70s. We'll have your complete forecast 
Coming up in just a little bit, right? All right, Trav, thank you. Well, to Broken Arrow now where firefighters say lightning caused a house fire there. When firefighters got there, they found flames and smoke shooting through the roof of this home. The house is near South 174th and 41st Street. Fire crews were able to keep the flames to the garage and the attic. The heavy rain, though, made the job tough. It probably delayed our response a little bit because uh, it was pretty well blinding conditions when we arrived as far as high water and stuff. So we have to drive a little bit slower and be more cautious on our way here. We're told the family members inside that home made it out safely, but the family cat did not survive. Another home was also struck by lightning during the storms, this time in Tulsa on East 31st near Lewis. The weather head on the home was hit. Tulsa Fire inspected the house and only 